It's time to make our picks. Let's talk to the pros. Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P., Joe Pizapia. That, of course, is Dan Harris and Kyle Yates, and it's you. And today, it's about that full PPR. Ooh, that good feeling you get when you get that whole point for reception. Some people don't care for this, but you know what? I like it. It's fun. Points are fun. I understand the half. I don't understand the standard. But you know what? Today's mock draft is about that full PPR love, and we're going to give you that point per reception right here. All of the goodness you could possibly imagine in a little mock draft action between the three of us, which is always a good time. We all know when we get together, somehow Dan Harris will find a way to get the first round pick, even though even though the 1-1 overall somehow is supposed to be generated. I feel like Dan Harris is going to get the 1-1 Yates. Don't you always get that feeling? Why does it seem to always happen to us? You know what? He created the draft room today, mm. so I feel like there's something going on behind the scenes. He talked to one of the devs here at uh, Fantasy Pros. He got it rigged. I feel like that is the clear and obvious answer. Yeah, the Dan Harris bot is very strong in the draft wizard. Dan Harris, you know, you keep saying you don't let people when we mock with it pick their own spots and all that stuff. I thought today maybe you would. But no, no, you created it. It's going to be random again, as I (laughs) hopefully you can catch those air quotes verbally through the podcast waves. But if not, of course, watch us on the YouTube channel. But Dan Harris, tell the truth here. I mean, is it random or is there a little something extra going on where maybe on the side you've worked out a deal? No, I cheat. I cheat. I (laughs) cheat in in everything that I do. And you guys, look, if you want me to be the person in charge of creating the draft and if you want me to be the person in charge of recording the draft for the YouTube channel... I'm just going to do what I want. So I'm going to take that first pick. Um, No, I promise it is entirely random. And as people know in Discord, asbros.com slash chat, where I do mock draft every day, I rarely get the first pick. I'm almost always at like nine or 10. So again, I'm going to take this first pick and I'm going to love it, but it is random. You guys have fine spots also for you, Mm -hmm. Joey. uh, You're five, Yates, you're four. That's good. Yeah, it's great. Says Mr. 1-1 one, one every time. Oh. Mr. 1-1. One, one. I'm going to get a shirt there. Hashtag Mr. 1-1 one, oh, one yeah, made up nice. for Dan Harris. Yeah, I'll if we get it. that on the shop, let's go to Fantasy Pro Shop. Let's get that bad boy up there. In the meantime, I just want to let everybody know, today, of course, we're going to be using our multi-user draft software over on the Draft Wizard. You can check that out at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. It's a fantastic way to perform realistic mock drafts with all your friends or your enemies or your frenemies. It doesn't matter. Get a bunch of people together. This is draft season. Get your mock on because the best thing you can be is prepared and flexible. And that's what the Draft Wizard allows you to do. It allows you to mock different strategies, back things out, work together, figure out how you want to approach your draft or just have some fun with your friends and get ready for whatever the big time drafts you've got coming up this season. And again, that's only available at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard in our mock draft lobby. And don't forget this week, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. It is the fantasy football festival of friendship. It's going to be amazing. Dan Harris, Kyle Yates, myself, a cavalcade of guests. We have some of the biggest guests in the industry joining us. We got folks from NFL Network. We got folks from CBS. We got folks from the Indies. We got folks from everybody. It's going to be the WrestleMania, basically, of fantasy football. And what's so great about it is you can only see it on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and click that little tiny beautiful bell for notifications at Fantasy Pros. Again, that's youtube.com slash fantasy pros. We're going to do mocks. We're going to do cram sessions. We're going to do reviews of players, busts, sleepers, everything you could possibly imagine. It's going to be beautiful, especially if you haven't been preparing much. This is when you cram it all in before the test. So once again, that's this Thursday coming up on the 19th, 10 a.m. Eastern we begin, 10 p.m. Eastern it ends. So we want you to be a part of it. For 12 hours, one hour, two hours, whatever you can move us into, please spend some quality time with us, your friends of fantasy football right here at Fantasy Pros. Now, gentlemen, are you ready to begin this mock draft? And uh, yeah, Dan Harris has uh, randomized, quote unquote, again, the draft order. He is at the 1-1. I am at the 5 spot. Yates, I don't even see you. Are you on this board? Did he just kick you out of the draft? Where are you? No, I'm at 4. I'm at 4. Oh, you're at 4 right ahead of me. Oh, this should be fun. Okay, good. All three of us in the top 5. I like this. So... Dan, why don't we kick things off here? And gee, I wonder who you're going to take here with the 1-1. One, one. 
Uh, first of all, I'm thrown off by two things. Number one, that you use the word cavalcade. Uh, it's a nice I word. don't, I don't exactly know how to respond to that. Number two, <laughs> that my one one pick Tim Tebow was just released by the Jaguars, <laughs> so I'm gonna need to uh, to to you regroup. Know, Throw a curveball. Yeah, <laughs> Let uh, me run are, to my rankings to adjust them. <laughs> we are counting down. I'm going to agree with 98% of our experts who think that Christian McCaffrey, again, this is two running backs, three wide receivers, and a flex. Nothing to think about here. Even in PPR, Christian McCaffrey is the 1-1. One, one. I don't know who the 2% of the experts are who are not taking him, but uh, I'm going to take him. So no problem for me right there. Pick is made. Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry go. Uh, so that brings up Yates, the verified one. At 104, Yates, what do you want to do here? Derrick Henry going at three in a full PPR format is uh, is particularly interesting there. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, guys, I've got my RB2 still on the board, and especially in a PPR format. And there's also news that Latavius Murray might not be a lock for this roster. So, Alvin Kamara, 350 touches in 2021. Who says no? Alvin Kamara here in a full PPR <laughs> format. Man, let sign me up. 104, my RB2. Yeah, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you don't do that. Uh, and now this is the problem. My favorite running back is not necessarily the perfect guy for this format. Everybody knows I love Nick Chubb, and I would still justify taking Nick Chubb here. Saquon's still kind of a tough sell for me at this very moment today in this mock. So I'm just going to keep it simple, stupid. And I'm going to go with Devontae Adams here and just go ahead and take Devontae. That's what I'm going to do. Let the man get paid. Let him have one more big year and then ride off into the sunset. And then I'm going to worry about running back with the next few picks here. And uh, I'm just not a big fan of how that all, you know, works out there. Because I just, I don't feel good about some of those other running backs where I feel confident. I feel confident in Adams. After Adams, Diggs goes, then Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Najee Harris. Oh my goodness. Boy, oh boy. The bots are good here at Fantasy Pros of the Wizard. Najee, 1-9 overall. Travis Kelsey, Aaron Jones, and Nick Chubb at the turn, then Tyree Kill, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Calvin Ridley, back to me. Now, I could, of course, double up here in wide receiver in the PPR, but instead, no, no, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit of, oh, let's say, mm, do I take the guy Yates wants just to piss off Yates for good television, or... Do I take the guy that I want? Oh, it's so frustrating here. Dan Harris, any advice here on this pick for me of 45 seconds? Do I go with my heart? I strongly or do I... object. You cannot ta- tap in Dan for advice on how to piss oh, sure me I off. Can. You can you can object. I'm just I mean, if there was it. ever a person to do that, it would Overruled. be Dan Harris that you would Thank tap you. in, but Thank you. Thank you very much. I declined to help. Um, oh, I'm focused only on winning the draft from uh, <laughs> my end. And look, I would I disagreed with your first pick, my friend. Okay, I'd of like Devonta Adams. I'm going Zeke. Out of curiosity, Yates, would you've gone Zeke with the fifth pick there in the PPR league where Joe went? I mean, it's so hard to pass up Devonta Adams. Uh, mm-hmm. It depends on what he does here. If he grabs a running back, then I'm fine with it. If he goes wide receiver, wide receiver, that is a no. It was just go. a matter of if I wanted to go Joe Mixon just to irritate you or not. But <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm having Joe Mixon problems the last two weeks. I'm getting the yips when it comes to Mixon. So I'm going to go ahead and take Antonio Gibson here. That puts you on the clock. And I gave you a guy. So when you speak of me, Yates, speak well. Yes, uh, Joe Mixon is the pick here at my RB10. (laughs) In half PPR rankings, he does get a little bit of a bump up, especially in PPR formats because of that workload that he's going to get through the air. So there is no one else in this backfield. Chris Evans, you know, he looked fine in first preseason action. You've got Samaj P. Ryan on this depth chart as well. That's not enough to take away from the workload of Joe Mixon. The only concern here is injuries and there's no guarantee with any of these players that they're going to stay healthy right Chris McCaffrey was fully healthy until he wasn't last year so Joe Mixon here at the 209 as my RB1 love it now we can only imagine that Dan Harris will stay on brand and take a a tight end here oh no Darren Waller goes right before curses what will Dan Harris do this is his always 1-1 plan we've seen this draft a million times here in fantasy pros I know you all listen and watch the shows on YouTube Dan Harris can't do his normal Christian McCaffrey, Darren Waller thing. DK Metcalf went right before Waller. Dan, are you okay? Can I, can I get you something? Maybe a warm beverage, a tea or something? I'm totally fine. This is more of an embarrassment of riches. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. fine. Are those your fajitas? I I hear the bell for the fajitas. (laughs) Everything's fine. Um, I, uh, I have an embarrassment of riches and I still, at this point, I'm not entirely sure what I like to do here. Look, there is, if I want to go running back, which, you know, Probably a good idea because it's going to be a long wait, but whatever. 
There's obviously Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who I like very much. There are dominant wide receivers sitting here on the board in PPR, and there is still George Kittle. So I know one of the picks is probably going to be a wide receiver. And again, in PPR, could be A.J. Brown, could be Jefferson, could be Keenan Allen. I will go with, uh, meh, we'll go with Jefferson. Okay, so we're going to go with Jefferson again, who doesn't really matter to me. Now the question becomes, do I take the other another wide receiver? Do I take an honor of our of our you know tags down in Tennessee and take a little AJ Brown? My son would be very happy with that, mm-hmm. even though this is mock and he has no idea. Keenan Allen in PPR, <laughs> or do I go with George Kittle? I am going. I could do whatever I want. I'm taking Kittle. I'm going with the tight end. I'm sticking on brand. I'm going. I have no difference between Kittle and Darren Waller. And I think I still have Kittle ranked second, although I flip flop them every day just to keep our our listeners guessing. Um, but I'm fine to go Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> Justin Jefferson, and George Kittle. And then we'll see what's available for me. But this is, you guys know me. This is the start I like to do from the one spot, which there I get every time go. because I cheat. Staying on brand. By the way, he, he keeps saying the phrase, I do what I want. And they keep having this vision of Eric Cartman back in the day in that dress, <laughs> being the bad child on the Maury Povich show. Eric That's, Cartman is yeah, my, is my hero. Well. Yeah, you're it very, very much I do what I want there. Yeah. All right, Clyde Edwards-Alaire goes next, which... And I was really hoping to make it back yeah. to me somehow. He did not. Keenan Allen, Yates, that puts you on the clock. And you've got a fair amount of wide receivers out there, obviously, in that elite group still. And running backs, you've already got Kamara and Joe Mixon. So where are you going next, my friend? Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, A.J. Brown is still on the board here at the 304. I know. Allen Robinson, yeah. Terry McLaurin, C.D. Lamb, Robert Woods. I would be perfectly fine with any five of those receivers. So I'm just going to go with the guy who's ranked highest on my board. That's A.J. Brown. Even though it is a PPR format where he might lose some value a little bit to like guys like Allen Robinson or even Robert Woods, it's still A.J. Brown. And we could, even if Julio, if Julio misses time with an injury, then the target told us for A.J. Brown are going to be through the roof. So A.J. Brown here at the 304 in yeah. a full PPR format, that is incredible value. I, I was not going to pass him up if you didn't take him. Even yeah. though I took Adams, I'm fine with Adams and A.J. Brown. That works perfectly fine for me as a start of a team. I will figure out running back. And I had this conversation just yesterday on Pat Mayo show. We were talking about, you know, you draft the board that comes to you. And that's just what you have to do. And, and early on, it's not that you want to go zero RB or zero wide receiver or zero anything. It's just you want to build core rest, roster strength. You want to be great somewhere. And then you want to take value picks later on, guys with upside at those positions that can outperform ADP. And there's those guys at tight end, wide receiver, quarterback, all the positions there. So now I'm looking at Terry McLaurin, Allen Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, who I am a, a very big fan of, everybody knows. Running back wise is David Montgomery, who I continue to support, even though I'm basically on an island, it feels like. But my goodness, this is very tough here. Allen Robinson is very steady. I'm going to go ahead and do something I don't usually do. I'm going to... I'm going to back off on the running back position, see what happens. I have a bad feeling that I'm going to hate this in retrospect. But you know what? I'm going to go here with the 53% suggestion. I'm going to go ahead and take a little Allen Robinson because I got a little excited this weekend about Justin Fields playing football sooner than later. So uh, that makes me excited about Allen Robinson playing with a real quarterback, a real live quarterback. After that, let's continue to look at the board and how it unfolds after my pick, J.K. Dobbins, who I was seriously considering going right after Terry McLaurin, Josh Allen, CeeDee Land, David Montgomery, and then the turn, Kyler Murray and Mike Evans, sweeping back, Miles Sanders, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, Robert Woods, Amari Cooper. That puts me back on the clock again. Uh, I'm a little mad because the running backs that I liked, I was hoping maybe I'd get Montgomery. I knew I probably wasn't going to get Dobbins. So yeah, so now I'm pissed off. I'm unhappy about how this has gone. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. So Looking at the wide receivers here, Cooper Cup, DJ Moore, not really super excited there. Uh, Lamar Jackson still on the board. He's kind of like having a quarterback and a running back. Kind of seriously considering him here. Looking at the running backs available at this spot, it's Daryl Henderson, it's Mike Davis, it's Travis Etienne, who I'm a big fan of. But Travis Etienne is my second running back, gives me a little bit of pause. I don't see a second running back I like here. So you know what? I'm just not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to take the best player on the board, and that's Lamar Jackson. So be it. Give me my quarterback and my running back in one guy. That's right. That's called efficiency. Uh, That goes to you next here, Mr. Gates. 409, you're on the clock. 
So you mentioned that there's not a running back that you like in this range, and there is one for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got Alvin Kamara, I've got Joe Mixon, but we talk about it all the time where running back depth dries up really quick. I mean, after this, you've got guys like Mike Davis, Travis Etienne, who are still fine picks, Miles Gaskin, who I was a little bit higher on before week one of the preseason. <laughs> uh, We're and not going to talk about that guy. Yeah. Ever. Malcolm Brown ruins Chase. everything. Yeah, right, you don't need seriously. to go running back. You don't need to go running back here. Trust me. You there's are, not a you running You want to go wide receiver. You, you have two running backs. Go wide receiver. Yeah, don't listen to Dan Harris. He's something else. Yeah, trying to like I am no. so confused yeah. at you giving me yeah. advice because I'm <laughs> so skeptical and cautious. You should be. You should be. Because, yeah. you should be <laughs> uh, I so I have talked about how I want pieces of the Los Angeles Rams offense. Uh, and with, you know, Robert Woods going at the 406, I would have loved if he would have fallen just a couple yeah. more picks. Uh, you know, I talked about I was thinking of taking him in the third round. Uh, so I would have loved if he was there a couple more picks later. But. Cooper Cup still on the board here at the 409. I've talked about it. I want pieces of this offense. Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are going to be a 1A, 1B situation here for an offense that is about to take off. I will go Cooper Cup here as my wide receiver too. This is, I think, the biggest mistake people make in fantasy football. They panic and they go, okay, well, I'm in a spot now where I don't really love these guys as RB2s, but I need an RB2. No, you don't. You need to find somebody who plays above the fantasy league average. Lamar Jackson plays above the fantasy league average. Therefore, I make that pick. Cooper Cup, A.J. Brown paired together for Yates. After that, Daryl Henderson goes, Adam Thielen goes, and now Dan Harris goes for two picks in the end of the fourth and to begin the fifth. So for the vast majority of Yates' diatribe there, I thought he was going <laughs> with Daryl Henderson and not was... Cooper Cup, which, which is what I didn't want. I wanted Henderson, who Yates then passed on, and then he got picked with the next pick. So I'm a little upset. Ordinarily, you guys know... Probably a week ago, what I would have been doing right here would have been taking Miles Gaskin, and I would have been really loving it. And I dropped Miles Gaskin ah, eleven spots in my rankings after what I saw. Yeah. In the, oh yeah, dude. I'm, I mean, welcome. He's still my first, my first Miami running back. But I talked about that in the kickoff. Go subscribe and check it out. But uh, okay, so I'm at Christian McCaffrey, Justin Jefferson, and George Kittle. I'm not going to panic here. I am going to take uh, who is a top player on my board. Who is Deontay Johnson? I mean, the one thing that we know from that Steelers uh, offense is Deontay Johnson's never leaving the field. He's still going to get plenty of volume, despite the fact that the Steelers are going to throw less. We may have questions about Claypool. We may have questions about Juju. We do not have questions about Deontay Johnson. I would be remiss here if I did not take another running back. We're going to be in the fifth. It's the first pick of the fifth round. And there is a guy who I still feel very comfortable as my RB2. I know, you know, I could go with ETN here in a PPR league, but I'm going to go with Mike Davis, who, again, Maybe long-term concerns. Maybe he breaks down. Maybe towards the end of the year when Atlanta falls out of it, they want to go to somebody younger. But as of right now, he's the guy. We've seen him factor into the passing game plenty. So in a PPR league, especially, he's totally fine. So I'll take him. Deontay Johnson with the last pick of the fourth round. Mike Davis with the first pick of the fifth round. Let's take a quick break from the show to tell you about Bachons, one of our sponsors. Now, Bachons is a very special new Japanese-American barbecue sauce. In fact, the name Bachon means granny Okay, and founder Justin Gill's sauce, Bachans, is inspired by his grandmother, so you know that it's good. Okay, it's grilling season in the Pisa Pia household. Everybody knows that all year round, but football season's around the corner, and you want to bring a little bit of spice, a little something special and new to your tailgates this year. Bachans is the way to do it. It's got a bold, fresh flavor. It's BPA free. It's got just 10 all natural ingredients, and it's less viscous than. I would say the regular tomato-based American barbecue sauces. So it's cool. It's different. It's going to give you a different kind of flavor. You can use it as a pizza topping. You can use it on noodles. You can marinate it, it dip in fries, whatever you want to do. Wings, of course you can do that. And what's cool about Bachan's is it's a family company. It's family inspired, and it's going to bring your family together as well. So right now, as grilling season continues, make sure you check out the great offer they're giving you at botchons.com slash fantasy pros. Again, use that promo code fantasy pros at checkout for 20% off. Again, that's botchons, B-A-C-H-A-N-S dot com slash fantasy pros and use that code fantasy pros to get your first bottle or 10. I don't know how many you want, but trust me, once you get one, you're not going to want to stop there. Again, that's botchons.com slash fantasy pros to get your 20% off and grilling season never quits. After that, Team 2 takes Tyler Lockett, and then Team 3 selects Brandon Ayuk. That puts Yates back on the clock, and me in the hole, waiting for Yates. Can we agree that DJ Moore is your wide receiver 3 in a PPR format is just stealing? Like it, that it's is absolutely pure stealing. insanity. The yeah. amount I, I Yates hate the way this draft is falling yes. to Yates. It's yes. really frustrating. This is, this is, this is my nightmare. <laughs> Yates is because everybody knows that 
<laughs> Yates's failings is what I look for in our company, and he's absolutely destroying. Which is the exactly strap. what you want to hear from someone that who's is. above you on the company. That is what I do. Like I wait chart. for I wait for you to trip, and then I just jump in and <laughs> say, "I told you, um, you're crushing the strap, Yates," and I I dislike it. So congratulations. I did select DJ Moore for yes. those on the podcast <laughs> listening on the podcast. I did select DJ Moore as my wide receiver. Well, you have. To. I mean, that's uh, just a, a fantastic yeah. value there. So love it. You got your two running backs and Kamara mix and you got the three wide receivers and Brown cup and DJ Moore. And you know what? Exactly what I was hoping happened did happen. Travis Etienne still available. I'll go ahead and take him now. I'm happy that I took Lamar when I did no regrets. And then of course, miles Gaskin goes right after. Yes. Go ahead. Can we talk about Travis Etienne sure. after the first no. preseason game? Cause okay. people are going to see what happened with James Robinson and Carlos Hyde out, out there with the starters and they're going to freak out about Travis Etienne. I am not freaking out about Travis Etienne. If I can get him at more of a discount now because of that uncertainty, sign me up. So no, obnoxious no. that you're stealing my thunder for the kickoff tomorrow, my friend. But I love it. It's fine. You are correct. I love it. And that's a great but Both of you, DJ Moore right there and Travis Etienne in a PPR league, love both those picks at the spot in the fifth round. Great picks. All right. I'm going to continue on to build my running backs because uh, I didn't early. So now I'm going to have to make up for it here. And I'm going to go take Javante Williams. I know what my eyes saw. And my eyes yeah, saw he ooh, good. explosiveness. Yes. He yes. looks good. Denver likes to run the football. Oh, wait, you're kidding. Melvin Gordon's hurt. I, I've never heard of that happening before. That's stunning. Yeah. Look, I, even if it's a, a 60, 40 kind of thing, 60% of the Denver running game, I will take as my flex option. I still think that's productive enough. Uh, by the way, after I selected ETN just to fly through before Yates is picked, Gaskin, Hawkinson, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, T. Higgins, Cortland Sutton. Then on the turn, Chase Claypool and Mark Andrews together. Going back, Juju, Odell, Jerry, Judy, Tyler Boyd, Kenny Galladay, Robbie Anderson. We had six wide receivers in a row. Damn. All the guys that I liked, Anderson, Juju, Judy, all gone. So you know what? Taking the running back, that's where the value is. And this that is why was, I'm happy I took Adams where I That did. was 13 non-running backs in a row <laughs> after yeah. after Gaskin went because you had the three wide receivers and all, oh my, I had the three tight ends and all those wide receivers. Wow, that's a run. I like it. All right. All right, verified one. You're up with a 609. All right, so I've got uh, Alvin Kamara. I've got Joe Mixon at my running back spot. Then A.J. Brown, Cooper Cup, D.J. Moore. So now I'm going to start to fill out the depth spots on my roster. So I'm going to go with Kareem Hunt here, as, mm -hmm. especially yeah. in a PPR format. To have as my RB3, sure. I feel like I can plug him into my starting lineup if I need to for a bye week. Uh, but then also, it, he does come with upside if we do see something, you know, God forbid, happen to Nick Chubb. So the insurance there, the or I'm sorry, the upside, uh, but then also a safe floor, especially in a PPR format, to be my RB3. So Kareem Hunt at the 609. Dak Prescott goes right after, which is a tremendous value in the sixth round. He has yeah. dropped a full round because of that arm condition. Give me that discount all day if you can get that discount on Dak Prescott. He's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Even, even if he's limited in that first game that game wasn't going to go very well for them anyway with that Bucks defense. So I wouldn't freak out very much. Debo Samuel next, Dan Harris, you are on the clock for the six, seven turn. Yeah, nothing. I am overly excited about at this spot. My team right now for my two running backs are McCaffrey and Mike Davis. My two wide receivers are Justin Jefferson and Deontay Johnson. And of course I have George Kittle, which always is a little uncomfortable when you draft the tight end early. Cause you mm -hmm. just look at your team, your roster generally, and you're like, Oh, this uh, looks a little weird. Uh, I'm going to go with DJ Chark here. And again, he's battling injury, but he should be fine for uh, the start of the season. And, you know, Mart will spoiler alert. I like Marvin Jones a lot as well this year, but I do think that I expect good things from the passing game. And I'm going to go with another running back here. Again, I only have two right now. It's not the strongest crew, of course, after McCaffrey, because Mike Davis is a fine RB2. And in a PPR league, this is not a guy who I'm going after in half PPR. This is not a guy who I'm going after in standard leagues. But in a PPR league, I will go with Chase Edmonds here and feel fine about it. Again, I think James Conner is going to steal a lot of the goal line work, and you've got Kyler Murray is going to steal a lot of the goal line work. But in PPR format, Edmonds moves up my board pretty significantly. So I'm going to take him here as my RB3. All right. So Edmonds goes, then Devontae Smith, then Michael Thomas still going. Team three, clearly not worried about the risk of Michael Thomas. We're going to have to have him on after the show <laughs> and explain himself. Yes, there's a couple of your guys. I mean, we do enough drafts together where I know your guys out there. So I'm fascinated to see where you go with this next pick in the seventh round. Well, this is super interesting because I could continue to load up on running back depth and mm -hmm. grab Michael Carter here yep. <laughs> uh, to be my RB4. I feel like that is fantastic value. But then I'm also looking at the fact that Russell Wilson is still sitting here mm -hmm. in the seventh round. And I feel like that is tremendous value as well for an offense that, you know, we saw Russell Wilson 
be the QB one in all of fantasy football last year through the first half of the year. And then as the offense started to become more predictable, uh, defense has caught on and we saw him trail off towards the end of last year. Seattle's made a ton of efforts to be able to rework that this offseason to become less predictable, have more answers on offense. So I feel like we could see Russell Wilson perform as a top three quarterback again this year. I, I've got him at like QB six, I think, uh, off the top of my head. So mm -hmm. here in the seventh round, man, I just don't, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to take Russ here because I don't want to have to worry about quarterback. If I can get mm -hmm. this value on Russell Wilson here in the seventh round, I'm going to take that every day. I think that's a tremendous value there. I love it. And you know what else I love too? I'm starting to feel real comfortable with Antonio Brown as my third wide receiver. That's right. This is where I've gotten to in life. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> there. I'm here. Let's go. Tom Brady's going to throw for at least you know, 4,300 yards again this year, somewhere in that range. And Antonio Brown, I think, is going to be one of his favorite guys. And I know it's going to be frustrating some weeks, but as a wide receiver three, I want a little bit of floor, which I think he offers, but he's also got upside. Antonio Brown still has a lot of upside. And that's the thing. The rest of this group, you know, Chenault is, I know, a very sexy, trendy pick, but once again, we haven't really seen it on the grand stage. He has injury problems. Will Fuller is going to miss the first game. I like Will Fuller here, but... Once again, it's it's that whole thing. Do I take Antonio Brown and that talent? And, and I have to say yes over him, over Brandon Cooks in that situation. Those are the wide receivers out there. I'm going to go ahead and take A.B. And I'll go to war with Allen Robinson, A.B. and Devontae Adams. Boy, could, I, could you imagine like two years ago if I told you that was a wide right. receiving core for a team that you could have on one team? It's impossible. <laughs> but uh, so be it. After that, Aaron Rodgers goes Gallup, Pittman, Brandon Cooks, LaVisca Chenault, Jarvis Landry, Logan Thomas, and Corey Davis at the turn. Coming back around at 8-2, you've got Will Fuller, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, little QB run, Curtis Samuel, Tom Brady. Boy, oh boy, James Robinson goes, Yates, you must feel real good about that Russell Wilson pick because there was a run on the quarterback position. Let's take a break from the mock draft action to tell you about top prop. Want to know what got me hooked on fantasy sports? It was initially the smack talk in the competition with friends, and I've been obsessed ever since. And if you enjoy that fierce competition just as much as I do, then I'm excited to introduce you to Top Prop, a new and growing game in the fantasy space that allows you to take your fantasy leagues to the next level. Top Prop allows you to create head-to-head -head contests with real money with your league mates in your existing season-long leagues based on your active rosters. Is your buddy talking too much trash? Are you confident in your roster this week? Well, challenge your league mates at any point in the week. Yes, this could be a Thursday afternoon or your full roster versus their full roster. Sweating out a tense one-on-one -on -one Monday night battle. All of it works here. You could challenge your league mates then too. Top prop allows you more flexibility with your current fantasy roster and league. No more one week, just one matchup mentality. It's your team. Create the contest that you want to see. And this process is easy to get started. Import your league from ESPN or Yahoo. Step two, invite your league mates. Step three, create contests and get the smack talk going. Go to toppropsports.com and sign up to take your league to the next level today. Use promo code FANTASYPROS and you will be eligible for a lot of great prizes like a Christian McCaffrey signed jersey, NFL game tickets, and a whole lot more. Again, go to toppropsports.com. The code is FANTASYPROS. Now... Back to the draft. Uh, looking right now at the wide receivers, Darnell Mooney, Marquise Brown, Jalen Waddle, all still out there. Mike Williams as well. The running backs out there when it comes back to me, Michael Carter, Damian Harris, still guys out there, Trey Sermon, Ronald Jones. But you know what? I'm going to keep pounding on that wide receiver door. I've already got Robinson. Mooney would have been a guy I would take, but since I have Robinson already, instead I'm going to go ahead and take Jalen Waddle here with a little upside there in the slot. So just in case Antonio Brown throws another party, and he misses some time. At least I've got another guy with a lot of talent, Jalen Waddle. Boy, oh boy, Yates, what a difference a couple weeks makes in terms of ADP, right? Eighth yeah. round now for Waddle. We yep. were getting that guy in the 12th a couple weeks ago. Not yep. so much the case. All right, 809, Yates, you're up on the clock. Ugh, this uh, is this terrible. Has to be, this, this has is to be terrible. the easiest pick this in the world. Terrible. I mean, once again. I was debating between Michael Carter and Russell Wilson last round. Michael Carter is still here on the board. Yeah, I'm uh, running this one up to the podium, so to speak. Michael <laughs> Carter here. Everything is coming up Millhouse for Kyle Yates today in this draft. Michael Carter goes to him. Trey Sermon next. Tannehill right before Dan Harris. That's got to be crushing for you, Dan. Insert uh, the John Ralphio, the yeah. word <laughs> uh, yeah, that we could do right now because I was considering taking quarterback at the last spot. Now, Wilson would not have been my choice, to be honest. I, I'm fading mm -hmm. Wilson a little bit this year. I have made, so I would have taken Rodgers uh, over him, and I also would have taken Justin Herbert over him. But I was like, all right, whatever. We'll, we'll see. I can probably wait. 
And then Wilson went, and then Rodgers went, and then Herbert went, and then Hertz went, and then Brady went, and then Tannehill went. So I'm a little upset at this point. So I have to sort of think about, do I take the last quarterback that I feel comfortable with as uh, my my QB1 in a single QB league? And that is Matthew Stafford. And again, you might be like, well, I think everybody I'm looking at our board has a quarterback right now, but... <laughs> I see way too many people taking backup quarterbacks. And then so I'm not. You could take your best friend, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is gone, bud. Oh, he's Hurts gone, Hurts too. Oh, gone. he is gone. That's he's right. gone with oh, Team 10. Who that's is my right. Nemesis. Team 10 took him, and that's right. Team that 10. was quite a run. Wow. Uh, it was quite a run. And Oof. now, by the way, I have to figure out exactly who I want to take. So this is totally yeah. fine. I feel fine with this. Okay. So <laughs> I think ordinarily I do have Marvin Jones ranked higher. Yeah, I'm taking him. Relax, clock. Um, I do have Marvin Jones ranked higher than uh, Mike Williams. But because I'm already on DJ Chark, there are just so many, uh, you know, so many, so many times you can dip your toe into that water. Um, so now I'm looking at this is really bad, okay? Because I do have <laughs> the reason it's bad is because I I have one quarterback, actually a single quarterback that I feel comfortable starting as my QB one because I'm fading Joe Burrow, okay? Because I'm concerned about the injury, and it is Matthew Stafford. I'm plenty comfortable with him. That's it though. Everybody else on the board, I think, unless I'm missing somebody, has a quarterback. So do I roll the dice and gamble that none of these bastards is going to take a backup quarterback? Or do I just take the quarterback? Joe, you know how I play. I play scared. I play safe. I'm going to draft Matthew Stafford here, even though it's probably not the right choice. But I will not be left with Joe Burrow or Lawrence as my QB1. I just want Stafford. I, I'm very high on this year. feel comfortable with him. So I'm taking Matthew Stafford at the turn. Well, and this is a perfect example of you can absolutely wait till you can't wait anymore and yes. end up with Matt Stafford or Ryan Tannehill and be perfectly fine at the quarterback position. If there's not a guy that moves the needle like Lamar or Kyler Murray or Josh Allen who comes at a good value, or even where Yates ended up going out with his quarterback, and Russell Wilson the seventh is a really good value considering what he offers – you can absolutely wait, end up with Matt Stafford, and be in a good position. I might but have rolled the dice personally. I, I, I'm i sure nobody's going to take a backup QB now, but it, it is something where, honestly, I've looked at this closely. I've thought about it a lot. I've done a ton of mock drafts. I do not feel comfortable with my team if I go beyond Matthew Stafford in a That's single fair. quarterback league. I really don't. I could roll the dice and take you know, Lance well, you could do the, the Cousins, Trey yeah. Lance. Uh, you could, you know, I could do that, but, yeah. but Stafford could Stafford could be a top seven QB pretty easily. Yes. So I, I'm just going with it right now. I feel good. I could, I would have. I'm sorry, I was talking so much because I would have called out Yates's pick right there because uh, uh, you you know where he's going. I get. I man, mean, it, uh, look, it was again. I hate once drought. again, this is just like perfect <laughs> in a good scenario. Way. You better in a good pick. Way. You better pick from the four in every draft, Yates. By yeah, the way, Moster, Devontae Parker, we joke about next. number one. We joke about number one. I don't know, man. Look at Yates' draft from number four, <laughs> man. Go right. Go with four. Go with four right there. Go ahead, really nice. Sorry, explain your pick. Darnell Mooney uh, is yep. your selection. Go ahead, Yates. Talk about it. Yeah, so as uh, as a wide receiver three, I probably wouldn't be comfortable with Darnell Mooney, but you don't have to draft him there. You can get him here as a wide receiver four, wide receiver five. I think that he is going to be heavily involved with Andy Dalton as the quarterback, but then... You talked about it with your Allen Robinson pick, Joe, like saying that the sky is the limit for what Mooney can be with Justin Fields at quarterback. You know, being able to push the ball deep downfield, that's where Mooney can really shine. Mm -hmm. He's got some wheels on him. So, yeah, as my wide receiver four, I'm not going to need to start him, but I can if I need to, uh, if Justin Fields starts, you know, earlier than we're expecting. What I hate about being in the middle of the draft is basically you're at the mercy of all the runs in each direction it's terrible give me the turn give me the top the middle always sucks but the good thing about being the middle is you can although you might not have a ton of superstars necessarily sometimes you can get creative in terms of depth so i'm going to keep going with depth here and i'm going to go ahead and take damian harris as my running back uh four which is pretty much where i'd want to take that guy and now i can play matchups now i can look around my my wide receiver core being adams Allen robinson brown and jalen waddle Feel very good about that. And then I got Gibson, I got ETN, I got Williams, I got Harris. Young running backs, young legs. I don't want to deal with these old guys who can't play the position where we're just hoping that they hang on for another year. After I make the Harris selection, Ruggs, Melvin Gordon, uh, Miko Hardman, David Johnson, Leonard Fournette, Marquise Brown, Zach Moss, and Ronald Jones. Jones was the other guy I was considering there. Uh, then going through here, Noah Fant, AJ Dillon, Kenyon Drake, Dallas Goddard, James Conner, Robert Tunyon. So, quite a little bit of a run of tight end there, which makes me a little worried. So I'm going to go ahead and 
continue on with this run and I'm going to take my dude, Johnny Smith. That's right. Let's go. I'm not as big of a Higby guy. Yates, I'll leave you the Higby. I know you Thank like you. him, so you won't be too upset <laughs> there, but I'm going to take Johnny Smith instead. So I'm going to double up here. Uh, and, uh, Yates, is it Higby for you? You're going to wait now. And you know, Dan Harris does have a tight end after all. Yeah. As soon as you said, you're going to take tight end. I went, shoot. Uh, but you <laughs> took Johnny Smith who let's be clear. I love the Johnny Smith selection, but I do have Tyler Higby ranked above him this year. I love what Higby can do in this offense. And I talked about it with Cooper cup. I don't need to break that down a ton, but it's, I want pieces of this offense. So to be able to get Tyler Higby here as uh, my starting tight end, who I've got as a top eight tight end this year in the back end of the 10th round. Love it. Six of the 11 picks this round have been tight ends. Just want to yeah. throw that out there. This bot is a fascinating one that we got yeah. today. Russell Gage and Irv Smith go back to back. Uh, Dan Harris, you're up for 10-11. Yeah, I feel pretty good about George Kittle uh, right now. But yeah, the, <laughs> I, I do like the Tyler Higby pick. In, I like all of you. It's this pick. It's, this, is, this is the worst draft I've ever been in. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I will point out that nobody took a backup quarterback. Now, I don't know if somebody would have taken Matthew Stafford as a backup quarterback, but I don't care. I'm totally fine with it. Uh, I feel fine with both of my picks uh, in this round. I am going to take Jamal Williams, who, again, you know, I think DeAndre Swift is supposed to return to practice today, if I'm not mistaken. But we obviously haven't seen him. And even if we do, we know kind of, you know, we've seen, we've heard the comments from Anthony Lynn, and we know how he likes to run his offenses. So I'm fine there. I said that I was going to pass on Marvin Jones in the last time, even though I have him ranked. And again, I talked about this a lot in the kickoff, the difference in where all of us rank all these players I'm very high on Marvin Jones. I loved what I saw in the first preseason game. And again, there was no DJ Chark. But this is something, and you guys may think this is a dumb strategy, but this is something I do sometimes. It's almost like handcuffing a wide receiver a little bit in that if Chark does get injured, if, you know, he's injured right now, but if he if he's, you know, Or if he's just not injured, the guy. Maybe or if he's, he's not, not the guy, the but I, I, right. I trust enough. But yeah, you can see, by the way, guys, if you watch that game, like, I don't know, man. Lawrence looked very comfortable with a guy like Marvin Jones, who's going to be a factor near the goal line. He's got nine touchdowns in three of the last four seasons, and he wrestles the ball away. He's a guy who's sort of like a quarterback's best friend. So I think this could be a great season for Marvin Jones. I really do. And even though I have DJ Chark, I'm willing to sort of almost handcuff it because one of those two guys I'm confident is going to be a valuable guy that you can start every single week. So I'll take Jones here in the 11th round. I'm very confident. In that. Dan, when you look at the board in retrospect, after taking Stafford, any, I mean, you had that huge tight end run, which worked in your favor for sure. Is there anybody else that you got really upset with? Like, mm, I would have done that instead. And then taken Matthew Stafford. Cause I mean, I thought the Williams and Jones pick is really good value where you got them. I feel really, really happy about getting Williams and Jones. Obviously it's a PPR league. You assume that DeAndre Swift's going to take most of the passing down work for the running backs. That's fine. I did look, if I knew Matthew Stafford would be there, obviously I wouldn't have taken him there. And I might've gone with somebody like Raheem Mostert or something like that. But really I'm pretty happy with the way it went. You're right. Because of the run, I got a little screwed by that quarterback run, but I had a benefit of the fact that there was a tight end run. So, you know, with the uncertainty, I do the exact same thing over knowing who fell to me. All right. Uh, after that selection, two more guys go off the board. Gus Edwards, Devin Singletary, and then verified one. You made your selection with another running back. Yeah, I went with pure upside. Uh, you know, I do not need Tony Pollard to start at any point this season. If I do, then my team has gone in the pooper. Uh, so, <laughs> but Tony Pollard here. Uh, yeah, a pure upside pick that if something again, God forbid, but if something were to happen to Ezekiel Elliott, we're talking about a top five scoring offense. That and the starting running back for that team. So Tony Pollard, especially in a PPR, I think that he could be a bye week fill-in option too because he's going to be involved enough. So uh, yeah, Tony Pollard here in the 11th round. Let's take a quick break from the draft to tell you about IP Vanish. What is IP Vanish? It's a virtual private network or a VPN for short. A VPN is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is you're doing. That's important because what you're doing on the internet is no one's business but yours. IP Vanish helps you remain anonymous and secure on the internet. For listeners of the show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off. That's $349 for the first month, $31.49 for the year. Here's what you get with IP Vanish an anonymous IP address, circumvent online censorship, get protection while using public Wi Fi, and remember with IP Vanish, all your data is encrypted, plus you get that 24-7 support. All you got to do is go to ipvanish.com slash pros to claim your 65% savings. Again, that's ipvanish.com slash pros. Plan starting at $349 a month or $31.49 for the entire year. 
and they've got great ratings online as well. So go to ipvanish.com slash pros today and use that discounted code. All right, let's go ahead and let's take Elijah Moore here, just some uh, wide receiver depth here. Yep. Let's give it another week, see how things go here for the young quarterback in New York with the Jets. Uh, after that selection for me, the rest of the board flies through. J.D. McKissick, Naheem Hines, Rashad Penny, Yates' favorite guy, Latavius Murray, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison, Philip Lindsay. Quite a running back run there, seven in a row. Then Cole Man. Beasley. This is the run draft. Boy, oh boy. This Cole happened Beasley. the last time we did something where it was just like, I'll, I don't know if it's like the AI sort of like adapts to what we're doing. They're like, I, these guys are waiting. These guys are yeah, waiting. <laughs> we're going to pound this position or something. I love it. James White, T.Y. Hilton, who I was considering. I just couldn't do it. Jameson Crowder, uh, Tevin Coleman, Jalen Rager, and Giovanni Bernard. So now it comes back to me once again. And I kind of feel like reaching here and I'm going to get the reach alert. And I just don't care. Once again, I, you don't take a whole lot out of preseason, but what I do take is certain small things that could be really productive, especially guys that you want to prove themselves. And this is starting to look a little bit more like a dynasty team. When I'm starting to look at the, my roster, it's a young man's game. I know that. So give me, I'm on Ross St. Brown here. I'm going to reach. I don't care if I get the reach alert. It didn't give me a reach alert. Hot dog. Look at that, baby. I'm on Ross St. Brown for me. Once again, trying to build some wide receiver depth. I like what I saw. And uh, look, one of the few things that you could say Jared Goff did well in his time in Los Angeles was throw the ball to Cooper Cup. It looked very reminiscent of what I saw there. And I assume that you really like that pick too, Yates, from your reaction. Yes, I was, I had literally just... Uh, added Amon Ross St. Brown to my queue. Uh, well, he didn't last him. there so, very long, did he? Nope. Uh, it was. It's funny watching his tape at USC. I compared him to a, another former USC quarter or wide receiver, and that was Robert Woods. And Robert Woods, obviously, with his time in Los Angeles, and Jared Goff loved him, targeted him heavily. So it just it makes complete sense that Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be a factor in this offense out of the slot. Love it. Uh, all right. For me, the 1209 pick, I'm going upside again. And we've talked about this, Joe, where we've said, you know, two quarterbacks this year. I might actually be <laughs> in favor of it here. Don't. And to be Don't. able to get a guy who I think Don't. is going to be a top 10 quarterback because he's going to be starting sooner rather than later. Loved what I saw, obviously, in week one of the preseason. Trey Lance from the San Francisco 49ers. Welcome to the squad. I'm Trey so... bait. I love it. Let's go. Uh, Trey Lance allows you look and, and imagine if Trey Lance is really good, the haul you can get for Russell Wilson. If there's a quarterback injury right. or somebody plays poorly at the position, let's say Hertz doesn't become the guy people hope all of a sudden you've got a lot of trade capital, a lot of leverage to get better somewhere else. Good pick here towards the end for sure. Kenneth Gainwell goes next Jacoby Myers after that to team two, uh, Dan Harris, you have your remaining two picks now, the 12th and beginning the 13th round. Uh, that's a great pick, Yates. That would have been my pick. I think back, by the way, uh, shout out to my brother-in-law who had never played fantasy football. I don't know how many, whenever uh, Cam's rookie year was, whatever that year was. And he drafted Matthew Stafford kind of early as his quarterback in the single QB league. And with like his last pick, he took Newton in his rookie year. And Newton was dominant. And he, you know, basically won the league because of that pick. So I think when you have the upside like that, you can make that pick, which is basically what I'm going to do right now and pivot off Lance and go with Justin Fields, who does not have quite the upside of Lance because I don't think there's really a chance it'll start right off the bat. But I was going to take Lance as well, Yates, because I think that that's worth it. Um, and now, look, I, my depth at, at running back is fine. My depth at wide receiver is fine. There's no particular position that I'm like, oh, I really got to hammer this. So I'm just going to take the extremely, extremely unexciting Nelson Aguilar right now. Uh, you know, again, I know most people go for upside right here, but at this point with 13 rounds, there's still people who can help you as a bi-week filler week in and week out. Aguilar kind of fits that bill for me. So I'm going to take him here as my wide receiver six, I think, or six. So it's fine with me. Was it your sixth? You sure? My wide receiver nine. Right okay. Now, niner. Just want to make sure. Niner. niner. Is there a niner in there somewhere? Daryl Williams next, Mike Kosicki next. Then it goes back to you, Yates. 1304, close up shop. I love that Daryl Williams pick, by the way, uh, from yes. the lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Daryl Williams, we yep. need to be talking more about him uh, yes. because he does come with ridiculous upside if something were to happen to CEH. Uh, so, all right. So my last pick here, looking at wide receiver because I've only got four of them so far. So the guys that I have queued up are Traquan Smith, uh, Rondale Moore, potentially just despite Dan, but he doesn't have any picks left, so I won't do that. Uh, Paris Campbell is another guy who I am looking at, especially with this is my last pick. So. These guys, I want the the potential. I want to take just a dart throw. 
and then see what happens in week one. If they do not come out and perform the way that I want them to or that I expected them to, then I can cut them and I can go pick up a guy who did. So Paris Campbell is definitely someone that I'm eyeing. I'm going to go a little bit further down here, though, and I'm going to take a player that I loved coming out of South Carolina in the 2020 NFL draft. He is getting a ton of hype. He didn't even play with the starters in the first preseason game because he is locked in as a starter. Uh, and that is Brian Edwards here, the wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm. Uh, as my last pick. Oh, I only had four seconds left on the clock. I didn't mm, see good that thing. You did. Uh, yeah. So Brian Edwards, uh, as my final pick here, 1304, if he comes out and gets the target share that I think he could in week one, then uh, I've got a rock solid roster. I've got some best ball shares of Brian Edwards real late, real late in a couple drafts. So interesting to see what happens here real quick. Has the Callaway camp soured you at all on uh Traquan Smith's value? I was going to talk about that. So I, well, that's why it, I'm here. I pick up yeah, the slack it, where you fall you. off. dramatically. Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it has a little bit uh, with Marquez Callaway and especially too, because Traquan Smith has been banged up. He hasn't like, he hasn't been practicing. So I think that's part of it. Uh, where I don't want to go overboard with Marquez Callaway, but in a dynasty league, I'm picking up Marquez Callaway uh, if it, he's still available because there is the potential that he comes out as the wide receiver one in this offense while Michael Thomas is out. But I still do like Traquan Smith over him. I just want to say to both of you, shame, shame on both of you, Ooh. Trey Lance and Justin Fields ahead of the one overall pick in the draft yeah. this year, Trevor Lawrence, shame on you both. Trevor Lawrence has the job. You know he's going to have the job. How dare you? How dare you speculate like Boy, that? Maybe that's the, we have our QBs, man. Like you have. Russell I love. Wilson. Hey, I love Trey Lance as much as Yates. Almost, almost. I don't have the the stuffed, you know, action figure guy that I go to bed with every night like he does. <laughs> but still, you know, remember those pillow buddies back in the day? Those wrestling guys. Yes, like I feel like yes. we need to get a Trey Lance version yeah. of that for Yates for twenty twenty one. Uh, but you know, like right now, I mean, still Trevor Lawrence on the board. You got to look at that. All right. So now let's look at the grades here. Uh, C plus for me, once again, the uh, draft wizard thoroughly unimpressed. Uh, I'm sure the Joe Pizapia bot will enjoy my draft, but check it uh, out. Yates, how about you? How'd you come out from this one? This actually might be the highest grade that I have ever gotten from the draft (laughs) wizard. Like, and I'm I'm glad we have it on camera so you can hold it over us forever. This is an A minus for me, a 92 out of 100. Normally, the draft wizard and ECR and all that, it hates my grades. Uh, It hates my drafts, (laughs) but uh, this one absolutely loved it, and it's not hard to see why. All right, Team 7 came out number one. Yates came out number two. Dan Harris, you came out number three. You lost yeah. the draft <laughs> to Yates. I mean, I did. that's the only I, way I, I look at it. This is I, a loss. Yeah, <laughs> I also got an A-, minus, but a 90 out of 100, not uh, a 92. On the bright side, we have now a tab, thanks for our uh, outstanding dev team that you can look at the various experts. And Joe Pizapia gave me an A+, plus with a 97 that's out of 100. That's it. You could die happy. If Joe so Pizapia bot know... gives you an A+, plus, that is it. It is so yeah. difficult to get a good grade for me because, again, I, I want to challenge you out there. I'm not just giving yeah. away A's here. This is not a participation class. I want you to be good. So also, your nice. your rankings are garbage, so it makes me feel <laughs> worse that, uh, that well, I did well with you. No, um, I got gave me a B plus, so I, I don't all right, know. That's yeah. fair. Um, I would like to make this as clear as possible because I insult Yates like 60% of the time I'm on a podcast. Yates crushed this draft. I loved his draft almost from start to finish. Like every instinct that he had about (laughs) when to make a move, when not to make a move was correct. And I liked his picks a lot. So I, I, I lost this draft by coming in third, but Yates had a better draft than me. Well done, Yates. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry if that makes you feel uncomfortable that I'm, I'm paying you a compliment. I know I'm not used 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 to it, so... (laughs) I was going to say, I think you make, make him more uncomfortable than if you were to make fun of him. Like, right. he's, like he's saying, thank you? So, right. all right, let's run down uh, what you had, Dan Harris. Take us sure. through the roster and what it looks like starting with the quarterback and Matt Stafford. Okay, so I am going to sort it by team. There we go. Matthew Stafford is my quarterback. My two running backs are Christian McCaffrey and Mike Davis. My three wide receivers are Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, and DJ Shark. My tight end is, of course... George Kittle. My flex is Chase Edmonds bench, Mike Williams, Jamal Williams, Marvin Jones, Justin Fields, and Nelson Aguilar. The one thing I will say with this draft, and it's something that I really think that people need to do whenever they are doing a mock draft or whenever they are using our draft assistant, is use our cheat sheet creator. Because, I mean, you mentioned Rondell Moore Yates at the end when I took Nelson Aguilar. That was just because he wasn't high enough in expert rankings, because I'm about 15 spots higher, and I didn't have him at the forefront of my mind. If I had a cheat sheet, 
for a PPR league, I will know where it is. It will show my cheat sheet and my rankings, and I will know to take them. So that's the one thing that makes a draft uh, beneficial, I think, when you use, again, the cheat sheet creator. But I'm pretty happy with this in the PPR league. Like, I, I didn't nail everything. I made the mistake on the quarterback and everything like that. I fully admit that. And I got sniped a couple of times where I had to be like, oh, God, what am I doing? But I do think that I'm plenty happy to go to war with this team in a PPR league. Yates, how about your team? I mean, geez, it's it's pretty good, man. You you definitely took advantage. I, I, I'm going to try to uh, my best to throw some cold water on something here, but it's even a struggle for me. I got to tell you. So good. I, I got to shout out our dev team, too, because once I was looking at it by round, the draft board by round, and then when mm-hmm. you said, Joe, like, all right, let's start at quarterback when you were talking to Dan, I was like, ah, crap. Okay, well, I got to find where that is. Just a little tap right up just there. Just a little yep. tap. Just, little, you, just a happy, you by like team Ross. changed it. Just Super happy easy. Dev team. You're killing it. Right here. Yeah, All right. So nice little tab right there. Maybe quarterback that for me. I'm just going to talk. Quarterback, Russell Wilson. <laughs> running back, Alvin Kamara and Joe Mixon. Uh, wide receivers uh, as the starters, AJ Brown, Cooper Cup, DJ Moore, Tyler Higby as my tight end. In the flex, I've got Kareem Hunt right now, Michael Carter, Darnell Mooney, Tony Pollard, Trey Lance, and then Brian Edwards to round it out. Uh, Dan, come on. Let's find something negative here. We no, gotta... I look, I, the worst part <sighs> is Joe Mixon's going to get hurt again. There you go. Oh, fine. It was almost every single time that I was contemplating one of my picks at one at the turn. Yates managed to get him at, you know, a few picks later. Every time I, I love this. I don't, I do not have a single criticism. Like I, I'll force one in that. I don't have Russell Wilson Rank there. I have Rodgers, I believe, ahead of him in my rankings. I have Herbert ahead of him just because I'm fading him a little bit. That's my criticism, I guess. But no, great draft. I, I really would not have changed almost anything. Uh, the only, the danger of this roster I can only see is Mixon injury again, which again you can't you can't go into the year you know just thinking. But he's my RB two. But he's your RB two, which is what I keep saying, right? I don't feel good about him as my RB one, which is why I took Gibson over him because that was my RB1 conversation. It's like, I just can't go with Mixon again like I did last year and even other years in, in previous years as Mixon is, as a very key piece. I just can't do it in terms of roster construction. If Kareem Hunt fades into the background, if Michael Carter does not potentially, uh, you know, do well in this offense or separate himself or the offense as a whole is disappointing, if Tony Pollard is just, you know, bench fodder basically and he never gets an opportunity, that's the only thing that could go wrong here with this team is the running okay. backs. I'm trying to find something. I got one. I got one. I got one. Okay. I mean, it's the on. worst draft I've ever seen. I'm just All right. Here I'm, so nice. here's the deal. He doesn't like Yates, your wide receiver depth. I will just say like, it's not right. huge right now. Who cares? Have, Look at the three. Hold on. No, no, I get it. <laughs> but if AJ Brown goes down with an injury, right? He missed a couple of games at the beginning of, of last year. And he's obviously was battling through an injury. He's superhuman. If cup goes down, if DJ Moore goes down, his backup wide receivers, are Darnell Mooney, who we all like, right? Yeah, but it's love. still very unproven. And Brian Edwards, who, again, so we all like, but is pretty here's unproven. The, right. the thought process with that, too, was as I was going through the draft, I was looking at like adding to my wide receiver depth because I hit running back early on. And then in the mid rounds, I want to really like mm-hmm. just hammer home yeah. wide receivers. And as I was looking at the board, I'm like, there's no one here that I really want to take. And yep. so I was just going to go, all right, Michael Carter is still sitting there. I'm taking Michael Carter in that spot. No, you yeah. know, looking at those players that were still yeah. available, Tony Pollard at, in the 11th round or whatever I took him, like I'm not going to take a wide receiver there when there's Tony Pollard. And this is something too, like when you're going into your draft, you don't need to reach for positions of need. You can still trade after your draft. Like you can still trade and figure out other positions and, and try to mm-hmm. balance out your roster. But taking the value where it's at, allows you to be able to have more valuable trade right. chips to trade with. So Absolutely. I think that's kind of the the philosophy there. This is not, you know, a mock draft. Obviously, we, we're not taking this team as much as I would love to. We're not taking this team into our actual draft, into our actual league. But, you know, so the conversation ends there. But in your actual draft is what we're trying to do is prepare you for it. You're able to take these pieces and then trade them away to try to balance out your roster a little bit. So if I can trade away a Michael Carter in week one or two because he comes out as a starter or, you know, Kareem Hunt has a really good game or whatever, I can trade him away and then I can go Mm -hmm. get a a valuable wide receiver to be that depth piece. Draft talent. That's what you got to do. Worry about the rest later. Draft talent always. Yates, you can hold all these straws that Dan and I are grabbing at trying to find some negatives on your team while I go through mine. Uh, I've got Lamar Jackson at the top there, Antonio Gibson, Travis Etienne, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson. That's not a bad little duo. Then I've got Antonio Brown, Jonu Smith at the flex spot, Javante Williams, Damian Harris, 
Trevor Lawrence, Jalen Waddle, Elijah Moore, Amon Ross, St. Brown. I, I like this team. Again, I do too. Depth. I like this team. I, I would I would go to war with this team. Absolutely. I think I would be the annoying team in this league where you look at you go, I could beat that team. And then you get a big fat L at the end of the week. Sometimes yeah. I think that's that's what you want to look at. Joe, a is lot there of anything, is there anything the you would have done me. differently when you look back at your draft? I mean, you took Adams with the fifth pick. I, I'm not saying that that's wrong necessarily. It's not what I would do. I would take uh, Zeke personally. Still right, and I would take I'd... Chubb personally. But like, it's just right. a matter of in the even full, in PPR, you'd still in take the PPR. Chubb. I would. I was taking okay. that risk to see what the bot would do with Chubb and uh, Najee Harris in the PPR because mm-hmm. sometimes one of those guys makes it back in and, and not yep. quite there, but sometimes you see Najee go all the way about where Gibson went. It does happen sometimes. Now, again, did not happen here. I took the risk. I just, you know what? The thing with that Adams is I'm trying to build something where, you know, Adams had so much touchdown upside last year. He had so many targets last year. It's just, I don't see any of that changing. Like I don't see the structure yeah. of that team with Green Bay changing of how they do things because nobody could stop it last year. And I don't think anybody's going to stop it this year. Yeah. Um, but no, there, there's lots of ways you can go through. Typically, you know, Dan, you've, we've done a lot of busts yes. together all the time. I hit running back early and often I'm that guy, but uh, I don't know, man, I don't feel as safe with Zeke as everybody else does. I'm just not there. Uh, so I feel safer with Adams and this is not the first time I've rolled with Adams. I think a couple weeks ago I was at the sixth spot with the four of us and I took can Adams I, to be in. Can I ask why you feel safer with Devonte Adams over Ezekiel Elliott? Because sure. Zeke like as for, is that durability because Zeke's played 16 games like he's played a ton over the past several years. He's been one of the most reliable running backs and Devonte Adams has been known to miss miss games here. And there. Absolutely. So and is I've that, hammered him in the past is that just that. the state of the the offense with Dallas? It's, What's your concern there? It's it's my knowledge of the running back position that once you hit that four years, that there starts to be drop off. It's typical with sure. most running backs. Okay. And it's that whole thing. I started to see a little of that. And the problem we saw last year with it, and Tags has thrown out so many great numbers about the inefficiencies of, of Ezekiel Elliott, right? And all of us can, unfortunately, attribute that to Dak Prescott being out. But what if it wasn't just that? What if it's more than that? And when you factor in the mileage this running back has had in his career on himself in the NFL and in college, I think that's a lot right now. And typically what we see is these guys hit a wall at a certain time, a certain juncture, and I'd rather be out a year early than in on a first round pick and then have it ruin my season. That's kind of where I'm at with Zeke. I just, I don't feel as confident if if I get him at a discount at seven. Okay. Maybe there, because I feel better about where I can back it up, but Five is five is tough. I mean, I would love to see a healthy Saquon Barkley preseason game. That would probably make me feel better about actually taking Barkley over right. him, to tell you the truth, just yep. because he's younger, despite him coming off a major injury. It's more the age for me than anything at this point, which is a great conversation to have, because these are the conversations we know all of you are having with yourselves internally as you stare and obsess at your draft spot over and over again. And the only way to get out of that obsession and to come out with a good plan is the draft wizard go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard run your mock drafts run your simulations make sure you upgrade to the premium products we offer as well so that way like dan saying you can have the cheat sheets and the draft assistant with you in the draft and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at fantasy pros because not only can you listen to all the podcasts you can watch them we've got a ton of other rankings videos bust videos uh, sleeper videos everything going on right now is happening at the youtube channel including thursday the 19th of August from 10 to 10. That's right. 10 to 10 Eastern starting in the morning, going all the way to the wee hours past Yates bedtime at 10 PM. We are going to be running the fantasy football fest here at fantasy pros, huge guests, incredible content, wall to wall fantasy football for you, because that's how we roll here at fantasy pros. So make sure you subscribe to YouTube channel, fantasy pros, click that notifications button, just in case you forget that it's Thursday the 19th, but why would you? Because you know that's appointment viewing, appointment listening. Make sure you get in there and join the Festival of Fantasy Football. I want to thank all the sponsors of today's show. And of course, that's Bachans. Don't forget that best barbecue sauce you're ever going to try in your whole life. Go to bachans.com slash fantasy pros to get 20% off. Again, use that promo code fantasy pros for 20 percent off at bachan's that japanese barbecue sauce that goes good with everything family friends food all at the table together don't forget about top prop where the smack talk and fantasy and wagering against your fantasy all comes together that's right go to topproptsports.com sign up today and you might win a christian mccaffrey signed jersey when you do Again, use that promo code fantasy pros at topproptsports.com and of course don't forget about ip vanish 
You want to make sure that you have the opportunity to keep your internet activity private? Well, go to ipvanish.com slash pros to claim your 65% off savings today. And again, they've got plans starting at just $349 for a month and $31.49 for the entire year. That's ipvanish.com slash pros. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on. For Yates and Dan Harris, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fantasy Pros and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash fantasy pros.